Hi there and thank you for joining me in this video we are going to be looking at circles. The first thing we need to do is make sure we know the names of all the parts of a circle and then we're going to do some calculations to find those parts. In order to do that we are going to have to have a look at pi. I hope you find this useful. <music> I think it's important that we start by learning all the parts of a circle before we start looking at any calculations. So let's start with the very basics and work our way through some of them. First of all then, the line that goes all the way round the outside. That is the circumference. If we take a straight line through a circle and go straight through the centre from one side to the opposite side, then this line is the diameter. If we take a line from the centre to the outside edge, so from the centre of circle until we touch the circumference, that is half the diameter. And this line is the radius. Now we come to a part of a circle that is often given the wrong name, and that's this cake slice shaped piece that we have here. Now in common usage, if that was a slice of a cake or maybe a part of an orange, they are quite often called segments. In fact, it isn't a segment, it's actually called a sector. And in fact, there is such a thing as a segment, but a segment is an area that is actually divided by a straight line, so your segment looks more like that. Another one to learn is the name of this line that cuts across a part of a circle. This is called a chord. We also have a name for a part of a circumference. So for instance, if we look at the area here, which is just marked out by the two parts of the sector, the two radii here, we call this an arc. Now, because it is the smaller part of the circle, less than a half, then we call this a minor arc. On the other hand, we have another arc here, which is the one that goes all round the larger part of the circle to finish there, and that would be a major arc. And just one more to learn. You'll notice I've drawn another radius here from the centre to the outside. If I draw a line which is at 90 degrees to the radius, which just touches the outside edge of a circle, this line is known as the tangent. Now that we have all the parts of the circle, we need to start working on some calculations. And probably the most two basic and fundamental ones are the methods of calculating the circumference of a circle and also the area. If we are going to work out either of these, we need pi. A lot of people are confused as to what pi is, and in fact it doesn't have to be so confusing. There is an experiment you could even try at home. Take something that is circular, a plate, a wheel, it can be any size. If you take two measurements of that circle, first of all carefully measure the diameter of the circle. Once you have that, just as carefully measure the circumference. Once you have both those two measurements, take the circumference and divide it by the diameter. If you've been careful with your measurements, you should find that the circumference divided by the diameter will work out as just over 3. And in fact, what you've done is found a number that is very close to pi. It would be nigh on impossible for you to find an exact value of pi, but usually we write 3.142. So that is an approximation of pi, and that's the number we use in calculations. Now this takes us to the first of our formulas. If the circumference divided by the diameter is always pi, if we move that round, it means that if we multiply pi by the diameter, we get the circumference. And that is the first formula. Circumference is pi 
times the diameter. So once you measure across a circle, if you multiply it by 3.142, you will find the circumference. The formula for area is not quite so straightforward and really just needs to be learned. This time we are involving the radius. And quite simply, if you measure the radius, which we will call R, and you multiply by itself, in other words, R squared, if you then multiply that by pi, you will get the area of the circle. So area is pi times the radius squared. A is pi r squared. Let's just do a quick worked example of that to see how it works. Here's a circle. We have the measured radius of 6 centimetres. So A equals pi times the radius squared. So that will be pi times 6 squared. And we know that 6 squared is 36, so we are going to multiply 36 times 3.142, and we would get the answer 113.112 centimetres squared. So pi times the radius squared. Now, if we want to find the circumference of the same circle, we are going to need not the radius but the diameter but that's okay because the diameter is all the way across the circle it is twice the radius therefore it is 12 centimeters so circumference is pi times the diameter so that is pi times 12 and that equals 37.7 centimeters so by using pi multiplying by the diameter I know what the circumference is by using the radius squaring it and multiplying by pi I know what the area is here we have another calculation that you may need and that is where you are asked to work out the area of part of a circle in other words a sector there are in fact two sectors here there is the smaller sector on the right hand side and the larger sector which is the rest of the circle you may be asked to find the area of either of these and we can do that provided we know the angle of the sector here so the first thing we do is find out the area of the whole circle and we know that that is pi r squared so that would be pi times 4 squared in this case which is pi times 16 so the answer we get is 50.24 centimeters squared so that's the area of the whole circle I am only wanting the area of this sector here therefore I work it out as a fraction of the whole circle we know that a whole circle is 360 degrees so as a fraction it would be 60 over 360 60 degrees out of a full circle so we would multiply that by 50.24 and that would give us the area of the sector and in this case it works out as 8.37 centimeters squared to the nearest two decimal places of course working out the sector of the larger part here you could do it two ways you could simply subtract the smaller sector from the whole circle or you could work it exactly the same way knowing that this is 300 degrees in summary then the circumference of a circle is equal to pi times the diameter the area of a circle is also pi but this time we are multiplying it by the radius squared and if we are looking for a sector we work it out by using the angle as a fraction of the whole circle those are the three calculations you'd be expected to know but just as importantly learn the parts of the circle as they may be questions themselves in an exam
Well, as I said at the beginning, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do subscribe to my channel. I have new videos coming out all the time and plenty more for you to have a look at. Hopefully, I will see you again. Thank you.